So Basil B. Clark is himself a veteran of the Vietnam War, but as a retired university professor, he found himself drawn to write about not only his own experience on the battlefield, but about another soldier who survived an ordeal that many did not. And so what better person to understand the horrors of war than another soldier and to share those stories? Thanks for joining us, Mr. Clark. Thank you for having me. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your military history and then what inspired you to write your most recent book. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in the military for eight and a half years and I served in Vietnam. I was 14 months uh, with the infantry there. And then I spent another six years, most of that time in Germany. Then after I got out, I went to college and uh, taught, retired from the University of Pikeville in Pikeville, Kentucky, uh, 2014. Um, but anyway, uh, let me mention the reason that I'm uh -huh. wearing my hat today yeah. is, well, I always wear it, but the fact that it's very much a part of the story because I was at a VA clinic, outpatient clinic in Prestonsburg, Kentucky, and an older gentleman came in accompanied by someone that I figured was his son, later found out that was so. And his hat was identical to mine, except instead of the Vietnam, uh, his said Korea. Uh, so we connected over the uh, patch mm -hmm. of the 1st Cavalry Division. And he started telling me a little bit about his story. Uh, he came to sit next to me because of the hat. And so then we, we connected later and became friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked about doing his story and he didn't want to at first. He said several people had asked about doing his story. There are two things involved. One was what you would call a survivor's guilt. Why should my story be told about surviving a massacre where 41 died and he was one of five who survived? Why should his story be told when so many of his friends were lost? Right. And so that was a big uh, issue for him. And then the other was the trust factor. He didn't want it to be a story that he didn't recognize mm -hmm. when it became a book. Right. And after just meeting several times and just visiting, uh, we were having uh, lunch in the nursing home dining hall, and he said, you know, I think I can trust you to tell my story correctly. And so that's when I started a series of interviews with him, and it continued for the next almost four years. Wow. Uh, I have moved since then, retired from eastern Kentucky, uh, the University of Pikeville there and came down to uh, the Chattanooga area, mm -hmm. Ottawa, and so 600 mile round trips, uh, you know, I didn't get to see him as much then. Uh, but his story, uh, they survived, the men that survived the massacre, mm -hmm. they, they were shot with their hands tied behind their back, uh, they were prisoners of war, uh, 41 died, the five survived, and uh, much of that was because their friends fell on them and they pretended to be dead. Uh, James is the only living survivor now out of those wow. five. Uh, wow. He's in uh, Paintsville, Kentucky in a nursing home, James Melvin Rudd. So it's a, mm -hmm. a strong riveting story of mm -hmm. how uh, he moved from a place right after the massacre. Uh, he went back to his unit after he got out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he went uh, from a place of bitterness and desire for revenge to a point now of acceptance and peace and, and forgiveness. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a strong story. It's not just about that. That's the central part of the story, but also his childhood right. is in there, too. Right. See the full picture of everything. Right. Get a good picture of, of who Mr. Rudd was. Um, so what, what was it like for you? You have your own stories and your own experiences mm -hmm. to hear his stories and experiences. And, and did you learn anything, or how did it change you? Well, we're all very subjective. And so it seems like it's human nature to say, well, my story's, you know, mm -hmm. the most important thing in my life. And then sometimes we, we encounter other people that we realize their story is very difficult too. Uh, Korea has been called the Forgotten War. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, many of the stories that came out of there, it was like people just didn't want to think about right. uh, another war mm -hmm. uh, at that time. And so uh, it, it was just interesting from that perspective to uh, talk with him and talk about the similarities and the differences. Uh, 
they just had it very difficult over there. So the, this book um, for Mr. Bright is called Massacre at Hill 303. Mm -hmm. Where can we purchase this book and where can readers get a copy? Okay, if you want an autograph copy, it's <laughs> hill303.com. Okay. Uh, then it's also available on Amazon and Kindle and Barnes and Noble. And let me mention uh, on June 30th, uh, there will be a book signing at Barnes & Noble okay. uh, for the book. Well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And you do have a few other books out um, as well. So go ahead and grab those, pick those up. Mr. Clark, thanks for sharing his story. Thanks for sharing your story with us also. We hope to talk to you again real soon. Make mm -hmm. sure you go out and get that book. June 30th is the book signing, right? At Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble. Or Hill303.com. All right. Yeah. Mr. Clark, thanks for joining us. You guys stick around. We'll be right back.